All right, let me start in by uh, administratively welcome, welcome uh, 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 technologist TS, uh, Norinik Mansalik, to, to our class here, to uh, EBB 31, and no, sorry, 6103, uh, firms competition, um, firms institution and competition. So today is uh, the 16th of uh, April 2022, and we, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm honored actually to have to have him in this particular class uh, to share some of his experience, especially with managing a particular uh, a firm itself, right? Uh, just a little bit of uh, background about himself. I think he's the managing director, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, for the company named uh, Black Dot. Uh, and think to know more about his company, of, his, uh, of what they are doing and what sort of uh, uh, things that they involve in the industry and so on. I think I'll, I'll just um, certainly pass the floor to him. And, and uh, uh, the time now is uh, 3 p.m. Uh, surely the rest of you uh, who are attending here today, if you have any question later, you can always ask him. Right? No problem. Uh, I, I, I don't see any issue there, right? Is it okay if you have any question to ask you? Uh, uh, Nick? Sure, I'm more than happy. <laughs> All right, I think you can start. You can start to share your screen if you can. I think you should be able to share your screen if you have a slide. Okay. I pass the floor to you, uh, okay. Nick. Okay. So, um, thank you again for uh, calling me, uh, Dr. Evan Lau. Uh, thank you again. You're such a very good person, very nice person. Macam biasa, as usual. Uh, since uh, I'm one of his students last time, back in 2016, and I love his class. I love it. <laughs> so basically, I just want to know about uh, the background of uh, of the participant side. Actually, do, do you have any international student right here? More to local? We, we should have one, I think, uh, Nick. I think uh, 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 this one girl actually from China, actually in this class, and she's in, she's based in China. Uh, oh, based in China. Yeah, Sorry. the rest of the rest of them are Malaysian. Uh, okay. And, uh, but, but, if, but certainly they can answer also, no problem, you can ask them. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, if you need to ask anything, you can chat, drop the, uh, just comment inside the chat room. Uh, I will see the comment inside the chat room later on. So basically, uh, this is uh, this presentation is about the practical application of strategic management in the construction industry in Sarawak, and we will focusing more toward uh, SME, SME sector. SME sector, uh, uh, yeah, SME, SME sector, which means that uh, any revenue that is below than three million, we will focusing more toward uh, that industry later on. And then during this lecture later on, we will uh, uh, we will study about uh, the strategic management, and then after that, the application of strategic management in the SME sector, and then we will do a bit of the case study later on, how to turn around the small company to become uh, not to become big company, but to turn around the company which is losing 30, 30 millions. So this is the case study that I'm going to share with you later on, and. Uh, uh, that's it. So my name is Nonik Masale, one of the director uh, of the Black Dot Management, not a CEO, just a director. Because our company, uh, we don't have any CEO, we don't have any managing director, because we feel that the, the word CEO is quite big, too big for us. It's too big. And uh, our company actually involved in uh, construction field. We are one of the G7 company in Sarawak. Uh, G7 company means that uh, company who have the license to do unlimited value of project in Sarawak. And we are one of the active company in Sarawak and the class A company registered under Sarawak, uh, Sarawak government. So that is our company. And recently our company has experienced a massive expansion, a very serious expansion, which is uh, our company right now uh, gazetted under Sarawak law. And we are one of the native company in Sarawak. And any changes in our shareholding right now, we need to request approval from the ministers. So that is the best part about our company. And the worst part is we need to get the approval if we want to change any shareholder later on. 
And in this uh, in this session later on, I'm going to share with you uh, uh, the things that never been shared before to the public, and you will understand how the our corporate structure will be uh, the corporate structure normally that in the uh, corporate field later on. So in this uh, sharing later on, you will never see this type of strategy in any books later on. I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you. So this is based on the study, on my study, based on uh, how I work in, in the industry and how I liaise with, the, uh, with uh, some of the experts in this industry to make sure that our company comply to the government regulation and also to make sure that our company uh, expand, uh, can support the expansion plan. So that is, uh, uh, I'm going. What I'm going to do, to do later on. So, so it's quite a very interesting topic. Uh, so, so this is uh, uh my this is my information about myself. My name is Nanik Mansali, one of the director of the Yurka Sriambahat, which is investment holding company, the company that I newly established to to do the investment holding for my own company. So. Later on, I will tell you one by one how I manage my own company using uh, not only to change the, the shareholding to become the corporate shareholding and to manage the company using other company to make sure that to reduce my uh, operating risk. I will share to you how uh, it works later on. And then I'm one of the uh, degree holder from UTM Skudai, uh, industrial, more toward the industrial technology. and. The master graduate also CMBA, which is the class that you attend right now, and uh, one of the prof professional technologies, which so is an emulation part of technologies, uh, specialized in building infrastructure technology, a member of TAM, Technology Association of Malaysia, certified construction manager for CIDB, certified construction manager for OTHM UK, and also the board study of UTM Skudai. So uh, newly elected as a board study to to review the curriculum for under the University of Technology Malaysia. So this is the basically uh, about myself. A very simple introduction about uh, about myself. I'm quite very young. Uh, it's very tough. Business is seriously tough. Uh, I failed a few times before. I lost a few hundred thousand before, and sometimes things got very uh, very tough. So. So in case anything happen later on, if you do your own business later on, my advice to you is no matter what happened in the future, you need to move forward. Move forward, forget everything behind and also try to improve yourself. That is the most important thing. And then after that, for financial, financially, you need to take care of yourself financially. So if you earn something from your company later on, do not spend it lavishly. That's the advice from me. And do not buy unnecessary things if you understand if you see money you definitely will look out for bmw or mercedes-benz so, so do not do that so invest invest more toward uh, the expansion of the company invest more toward the license of the company invest more toward how to make the company become better place so the best investment is is not on on the asset which is deficient value try to invest on the uh, asset which is more toward acquisition value, which is a building. So basically, I'm uh, owning one building right now in Kuching. So I'm converting that building to become the facility for the uh, for my own company later on. So basically, this is a bit of uh, about introduction about me and my company. So I'm here to to teach about the SME sector, a bit of my company, a bit of strategy. A bit of strategy to for collaboration, a bit of strategy to to harm other company, but do not do that. At least you know, it's there. So this is uh, what I'm going to share to you right now. So uh, so this is we we start my slide. We're very simple. It's not a technical, but theoretically. So what is SME? SME stands for small medium enterprise. So based on SME corporation, SME corporation Malaysia. So any manufacturing sector who is defined 
and have the sales turnover below than 50 million is considered as a small is a small this is the definition that you need to uh, to see lah. and any service uh, any other service uh, sector who has the uh, the sales turnover below than 20 million is a consider a small is a consider as sme2 so this is a basic definition of the, the industry of the sme in not only in malaysia but applied only in Sarawak. so if you see other company they have a sales turnover for example in construction industry turnover not exceeding 20 million they are sme so basically i'm sme2 <laughs> SME too. So, and uh, uh, just remember this term. You will see a lot of uh, a lot of uh, people said that uh, SME sector. We are one of the SME. Uh, can you check their sales turnover? If their sales turnover is more than fifty million, they are large already. But most of the company they said mm, my turnover is uh, above thirty, uh, below than thirty million. They said they are large already. No. So this is the definition that you need to follow in the industry. So, uh, so basically, you need to step up your game from, uh, from the small player, from 100,000 turnover to become 1 million, 1 million turnover to become 5 million, 5 million to 10, 10. You need to, to work your way, to work your, yourself in step by step, uh, step by step. So, so this is the definition. So a bit of theoretical. So that on we go to the best part. No need to worry. This definition, this uh, presentation is not not taking in uh, quite long times. So okay, this is based on my study. This is the number contractor registered with CIDB in Sarawak. Can you imagine? There are nine thousand five hundred thirty-seven local company registered in Sarawak. I'm talking about the contractor, contractor. Uh, construction field industry in Sarawak, in Sarawak only, we got 9,000. I can guarantee you within that 9,000, only 1,000 active, others not active. Uh, that 8,000 is considered as proxy, maybe proxy to other company. And that 1,000 is the one who do works. 1,000 is not much. Some people, they, they establish a company, but the company, company is dormant, not active. Not active means that they are not making any sales. They are not making any uh, revenue. So in Sarawak, we have a lot of problem whereby we don't have enough contractor in Sarawak. Can you imagine if someone who bid 10 million project, only 10% coming in, or sometimes 14%, sometimes five, sometimes one. <laughs> they need to retender again. So it's quite very funny in Sarawak compared to Semenanjung. Semenanjung, if you release one tender, you will see 20, 30 contractors coming in to bid the project. So over here, as you can see, almost 5,000 grade one. Grade one is... Uh, okay, grade one. Grade, if you see the definition, the, uh, the license under CID, uh, CID Malaysia, Grade one, you can do project maximum 200,000 ringgit only, only 200,000 ringgit only. And for the grade two, 500,000 ringgit max. For the grade three, 1 million max. Grade four, 3 million max. Grade five, 5 million max. Grade six, 10 million max. Grade seven, 10 million and unlimited. So this is the license that uh, the approved by CIDB Malaysia. And if you want to involve in the construction industry, you need to apply this license. But for the international player, uh, which is from China, for example, China Harbor, ZCC, CCCCC, and other China company who involved is Sinoma, recently come to Sarawak. Uh, if they want to involve in the construction industry, they need to register under CIDB Malaysia under foreign company. They are not comply to the any grade one, two, three. They are foreign company. But for the local company, we have our own grade. So over here, what is the significance that we know? What is the, the significant of the reason why we know about grade one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven? As a business person, as a businessman, as a MBA candidates, you need to know who is your competitors. You need to know which area they have their own your competitors. For example, if you go to 
grade one, you need to compete 5,000 companies in Sarawak. You need to compete, compete 5,000 companies. If you go to grade two, 1,500 companies. Grade three, 1,100 companies. Four, 200. Five, 300. Grade six, interesting. I just know about this yesterday because I prepared this uh, calculation yesterday. 161 companies only. Grade seven, who is grade seven is the industry that I, I involve in 761. Inside this 761, only 400 percent, and not 400, 200 percent who is active. I think it's active. Others is not active, not active. So later on we will talk more toward uh, grade number four, grade four, CIDB grade number four, which is the, the company who only can involve in the maximum project is three million ringgit only. And we comply with the CITP, uh, comply with, with the SME uh, definition. Any, any turnover that is below than 10, uh, 20 million is considered as SME. SME. This uh, grade number four is SME. So foreign company, we have 44 companies only. And inside the 44 company, there is one company that I really know that I manage the license, Jongsun Srambahat, Jongsun ITC Srambahat from South Korea. Uh, one of our associate too. They came to Sarawak back in 2008, 18, sorry, uh, to bid for transmission transmission line project, 275 kV transmission line project. I coordinated the, the project uh, to, to bid the project under Sarawak and Jibra back in 2019. And also the reason why I expand internationally because of we have a international uh, partnership with other company. Uh, we go to the next slide. So you need to know yourself. The most important thing when you, you have your own business, when you have your own business and you want to do your own business, you need to understand yourself. You need to, you need to answer a few questions. For example, what is your strength? For example, you have a company, you have a G4 company, you have construction company, but you need to know your strength. Where is your capacity? Where is your capacity? But in, uh, in uh, uh, you can do your own SWOT, SWOT analysis, you can do. Uh, but this is the basic question that you need to answer. What is your strength? What is your weakness? Uh, does your license have is complete or not? Uh, can you survive uh, in this industry? Do you have any financial backup? Do you have any reliable information? Do you have any reliable subcontractor? Because if you, the uh, subcontractor, not only uh, you have a license, but you can subcontractor main lab, uh, labor to other person, but the material you, you manage by yourself. That is the, the how we manage our own project and the reason why we, we, we can survive in this industry by cutting cut the, we manage our own, uh, uh, our own material. So we can get some profit on the material part, but for the manpower, we, we, we stop to, to the manpower uh, supply. Uh, do you have any net network? The ugly truth about the industry, you have any network. Uh, network, network means that uh, not only friends, uh, for, for example, they will give you a lead coming soon, they will have another uh, uh, tender coming out. They will not giving you any hint how much the price will be, come, will be let on, but they, uh, they will give you a hint. Six months from now will be what happened. Six months from now, what happened? For example, Sarawak Metro, uh, for Sarawak Metro, Metro right now, they are in the process of designing the uh, the platform and everything, the infra, and coming soon, they will uh, tender out the, uh, the issue out the first tender for the infra in, in December. That is the kind of network that we, that we know. The, the other people share the same information in the market. Uh, so the advantage of self assessment is you know where to improve you have inside knowledge. You can do your own risk management and you, you know there is a risk. You can mitigate the risk immediately. That is the most important thing about when you do your own self-assessment. So it's very, very important to do self-assessment. Without a self-assessment, you don't know what is your capacity, but you don't know what is your weakness. You don't know where to improve. So uh, in, even in my own company, I regularly uh, ask myself, what, what can I improve? What can I improve again? 
what can I add up in my, my company again to make sure that my company can expand, can experience the massive expansion. So luckily, uh, we are we, we quite very aggressively expand, expand, expanding. And a few minutes ago, right before this meeting, uh, this presentation slide, I had the meeting. So <laughs> I had a meeting. I have a one hour meeting in, in on the same table that I sit over here. Uh, right now, that that those person has uh, already going back. Uh, just now we discussed about how to to uh, to penetrate on the cells of the sand sand installer. We have a concession sand. Uh, we got the license, the sand license from the LCD installer. So we, it is a considered an expansion for me. And we have a license, but how to make sure that we can detect opportunity on the license that we have. So we collaborate with other people. Uh, we share the cake to other people in order for us to enjoy, uh, enjoy the cake together. Tama is a very bad thing for in business. In business in Sarawak, we are a small community around 2.9 million uh, population in Sarawak, only a few people who have business and we will see each other again. So it is a very important to make a good relation with other people in Sarawak. I think you guys know about this. So next is, okay, if you want to talk about the strategic management, uh, I think you guys learned about this in back in degree last time. Uh, you need to, in my opinion, this six definition is very important for me to understand about the business, for me to understand about the, the business strategy, business planning, because this type of definition, you will see a lot in the market. You will see a lot, almost every day. For example, the strategy, the definition of strategy that's related, this is the definition of the uh, strategy, a set of related action that manager takes into, to increase the company performance. So, the definition, the first definition that you need to, uh, to know, the competitive advantage. What is your advantage compared to other person? The advantage, the achieved advantage of over rival, over rival when the company is, is the greater than other average profitability of the firm in, uh, in its industry. I got this definition inside the, inside the book. <laughs> and uh, the business model, you will see a lot of this business model. So the concept, the conception of how strategy should should work together as a uh, where's my mouse? Okay, uh, the concept of the how strategy should work together as a whole to enable the company to achieve a competitive competitive advantage. Uh, in my opinion, business model over here, you need to define your own business model. Uh, what you want, what is your target market, uh, what is your, your current business that you're involved in, you need to know, uh, you need to know about this, you need to know about this. And then the strategic leadership, creating the competitive advantage through effective management of the strategy, strategy making process. Uh, so this is important too. And the strategy formulation, which means selecting the strategy based on analysis, organization, external and internal environment and the strategy implementation, putting the strategy into action. This is the most important part. Uh, this is the most important part. Okay. So in my opinion, the strategy formulation and the strategy implementation is the most important part in business field. So you formulate your plan, and then after that, how you are to implement your plan. But sometimes the plan is, uh, is tough, and sometimes the plan is not following your plan, uh, you need to deal with it. Try to to try to uh, to make sure that the uh, try to make sure that your end objective is there. So it's always happen. This thing always happen. You plan for A, and then suddenly that it will become the result is B. You need to deal with the B to make sure that you need to uh, follow uh, the end result, the objective. You achieve your objective at the end of the day. So this type of uh, definition that I, I hold until right now to make sure that uh, my company uh, able to, uh, to plan properly in, the, in, this, in this business. So that's it. This is the simple definition, which is important. I hope that you can 
we can study this definition too. So now we go to the uh, strategic, strategic planning process for the SME contractor. This one is for the small scale. So in my opinion, there are two types of strategy for this strategy formulation and strategy implementation. So in this box on the, on the left side is a box for the strategy formulation. So in over here, I try to, uh, uh, this one is for, uh, for the new company, for the new company, which is have nothing inside the company. You need to plan properly. For example, you need to plan your business strategy model. For example, you are one of the contractor. What are the license that you need to apply for? You need to apply for CIDB, and then you need to apply for SPKK class D. This is the first step you need to, to go through uh, inside the strategy formulation. And then after that, you need to put your vision. What is your vision for the company? Never mind. You need to put, at least you put your vision first. At the end of the day, later on, you will change your vision after everything has run smoothly and the vision will, you need to adjust your vision to make sure that to fit your current business. Uh, sometimes everything that we plan will takkan menjadi, takkan menjadi. So you need to do your own SWOT analysis and then you need to identify your own customers, who is your customers. But uh, in my opinion, the best customer always the government and the GLC because they are very good paymaster and university too. They are very good paymaster. But for the public, I'm not really recommended uh, for the new business to, uh, to, to involve in this uh, public sector because they're quite very, very tough market. And you may lose some money too. What happens if, if, if the public sector don't pay you, you will have a lot of financial problems later on. So that's why, uh, in my opinion, the best customer is the government at this early stage. Uh, and then after that, uh, for all the strategies, functional strategies, global business level strategies, you need to apply, you need to apply this because uh, the SME sector does not require this type of level strategies. We try to make it simple to make sure that your company can operate uh, properly. And uh, on the other hand, the most uh, critical factors that you need to understand really need to understand later on. Uh, I think inside the MBA later on, you will learn about the financial analysis. Learn, belajarlah tu dengan bagus. It help you a lot in the business. It help you a lot. For example, the uh, current ratio, liquidity ratio, asset test ratio, DE ratio, PE ratio, that type of ratio will, will make you understand your business better. So later on, we will talk more about this, how to analyze the company using the balance sheets. So very important. So inside my company, my company, I involved directly in the uh, preparation of the accounting of the company. And also I decided how much I need to, to put profit and also to divert few with this tax. So that is the things that, that I do actually. And uh, inside the most important thing as a contractor, you need to have liquidity in your bank account. Uh, for example, if you have a G4, you need to maintain a few hundred thousand inside the bank account. For example, 200, 250,000, at least 5% of the, of the of 3 million, 5%. Let me take some calculators on how much. At least 150,000 inside the bank. The reason why you need to maintain 150,000 out of 3 million, 5% from 3 million, 150,000, because of later on, the client who assess your financial, they will assess based on your last bank, last ending balance. If you are not in fine, you, you have a financial problem, they will not give you any project. So that is the most important thing. And then after that, if you have a fixed deposit, uh, you need to play around with the fixed deposit too. You need to put a bit of the money inside the fixed deposit to ensure that the client knows that you have a fixed deposit. The banking facility, uh, and then the financial backup if you have, the fixed asset if you have too. 
Uh, let's talk about the fixed deposit, the important about, about the fixed deposit. If you can put fixed deposit for one month, 20,000 ringgit, and the best part of it is using that 20,000 ringgit will back, will back by the facility later on. You put 2,000 ringgit and then you request for facility from the bank 20,000 ringgit. 20,000, you will get the 20,000 ringgit from the banks later on. And then you will enjoy another extra 20,000 ringgit as a banking facility from bank. In case anything happen, you can use that facility to back your, to back your business. So financial is the most important tools in business. Manage your own finance. And then after that, the banking facility. The banking facility is considered as good. With you, every project, they have performance bond. You need to pay a few percentage to the, uh, not percentage, uh, the government need to hold a few percentage. For example, if you have a 1 million project, they need to hold around 5% from the contract. Which means that fifty thousand ringgit, they need to they need to hold the, this money inside the the bank. In case anything happen later on, if you are not performing, they will take that five percent. Consider as a guarantee. So, if you have if you don't have any facility, you will have a problem later on. So you need to put fifty thousand ringgit as a as a performance bond to the government. But if you have a facility. You can use that facility and pay interest only. So your cost, you can use the liquidity to support your project. So uh, that is the best part of, about facility. In case anything happen to your business, you use that facility to back your business to pay your supplier or anything. But always bear in mind, try to try not to loan, try try not to do, to do any loan uh, at this first stage. If you don't have any uh, confirm business. And then uh, financial backup. If you if you have a private investor, it is good. But always bear in mind the private investor they will request few portion from your project, so your margin will be small too. Okay, is it feasible or not to have a, a financial backup or in private investor? Yes, it is feasible, provided you have a plan. The the best plan is if you need to surrender some of your profit to the to the investor. You need to you need to try to look for any benefit from your side. In my opinion, the best benefit is to enjoy the cash flow in and out. Even though your profit is not is not high, but you enjoy your cash flow. You can use that cash flow to to do other things. For example, to build other project too, because your your account is actively being used, money and in, in and out, and your ending balance will be in, sometimes increased, reduced. That is the best part. That is the best time for you to do, uh, to do, to do tender bidding or to do uh, to get some project in. So enjoy that facility. But always bear in mind, yeah, do not depend on one project only. Always, when you start a one project, you need to put another second project coming in. So after this uh, has completed, and then you have you need to find another one again. So it. You have your continuity over there, so and then your financially will become good. And a fixed asset, I think not all company have a fixed asset. Not all company, but if you have, which means that you are one of the rich people, uh, you know, which so uh, fixed asset is a good. You need you can use that fixed asset to request for facility from the bank too. Uh, I've seen some company they have. They have facility around three million for each bank. So every bank three million, my bank three million. They use the same method, the fixed asset, the facility backed by fixed asset to increase the uh, the facility. So they use that facility to support the project. So they have enough cash in the bank in case anything happen. They can use the money to support the further project and to complete. Uh, uh, the project accordingly. Always bear in mind that the government they have a, a very bad. Uh, they take times to to pay you. For example, three months, six months, sometimes almost one year. So you you really need the facility. But to make sure that you need to ensure that there is some margin, there is some margin uh, out of it. And do not always remember that. Try to 
control your operating costs inside the company. For example, you if you rent a, an office for 2,000 ringgit at Saradice, why not you rent the, the office at the Metro City at 1,000 ringgit? You save 1,000 ringgit over there. That 1,000 ringgit can cover your facility, for example, your utilities, your electric, power. Even my company, we control our own, our own uh, electric costs. So my office current, my new office currently being designed, uh, designed by me, uh, to save to to do energy saving. So we don't we don't do we don't open light at the at the day, day times because of we mm, uh, we save uh, we save uh, our money there. Mm. But just now, the kebelakang ni sudah buka because we now sudah keempat pencahayaan tu sudah kurang. So we open everything. So we we reduce our operating cost significantly over there, and uh, that is the most important thing. You control your own internal cost, yeah. but when you control your cost, your profit is high. Don't use that profit to buy other things. Don't use that profit to to enjoy. No, use that profit to expand your business. And then after that, when we go to the now we have uh, settled the strategy formation. Normally in this strategy, strategy formation, they is what uh, considered as an early part of the business. When we when we do the strategy strategy implementation, uh, this one is a design structure. When you start your own business, you have your own structure coming in. For example, the uh, structure to hire the right people, uh, the right engineer. Do not uh, do not do not overhire. You know what? You are one of the SME. You need to control your cost. Manpower is a cost, so you need to control your cost. And then after that, you need to design the organization control. For example, any SOP, any any procedure need to be followed. Uh, I design my own uh, design control in my organization. And then after that, you need to design your own culture. For example, if you come around eight, you go back around nine. Eight, you you go back around five. Uh, and then after that, you need to come to office. And then after that, then you go. You can go to the uh, project side. So that is a set culture that uh, I want to implement inside my company. Uh, but mm, me myself, as a as a owner of the company, I will work uh, crazily from eight until ten, sometimes until eleven. So my staff they can work eight to five, but I need to put extra effort on it on my own business because of. My business, my business need me more compared to uh, compared to them, because I need to expand my own business uh, uh, significantly. Wait, huh? Next. Okay. This is the post strategy evaluation. Huh? The post strategy evaluation is the uh, this gray area is uh, purposely at up by me, purposely at up by me. Uh, once you you cannot uh, you can you cannot put uh, you cannot evaluate your competitive advantage before your business start you need to run your business first when you run your business then you started to know uh, what is your capacity what is your strength compared to other uh, other competitors then you, you you can start to evaluate your own competitive advantage what is the best things about you compared to other people so normally after your business has start then you started to know about your your own competitive advantage. So that is, uh, in my opinion. So next. So, uh, okay, now we go to the business model. So I learned about this business model back in 2014. I think it's quite very, uh, very, very simple method to define your business. Uh, business. So this business model, uh, in my opinion, is uh, is a very good, uh, very simple and very good uh, method to be used for you to understand your own business. So uh, this business model canvas, I think, widely used by the. Uh, by the uh, uh, trainer consultant, the business consultant, and I found out that this is very good. And 
if you form your own business later on, you need to put everything inside over here. So it will show you, uh, it will show you according to uh, category by category, uh, what is your revenue generation, what's your cost, your key partner, activity, resources. This type of thing is very important. But during the business implementation later on, uh, you, you use this as a brainstorm only, but not for, for business implement, implementation, just for you to brainstorm only. If you don't know what to do, even I start my business like start last time, I don't know what to do with my business. I don't know what is my business. So it, it takes quite a few times. Uh, I take few, I take some time to understand my own business last time. I take some time. And uh, it's very tough too. So in this business, on, you need, when you do, when you become a contractor, you need to choose your own business, G4, G1, grade one, grade two, three, four. But uh, in my opinion, we can start with a grade four first because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a compliance, in my opinion. Sir. And you need to apply uh, a lot of license uh, under this company. When you form a company under Suhanjay Sharikar Nisha, the government uh, body to, to make a business, uh, you need to you need to establish your own business. Do not makin cepat makin bagus. To be honest with you, because your experience will be calculated from the day of your business established. Will calculate from there, and then after that, you need to form your own business account. So a lot of people in the market they form a business, but they 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 don't form the company company account. So in case anything happen later on, when you, when you close a business later on, where you want to transfer the money? You want to transfer the money into your personal account? The income tax will find you later on. So the best thing is to have a current company current account to do business. No matter what business you are involved in, open the current account. So you will you can you can calculate your own profit and loss from there. Uh, that is the most important thing. Uh, this is uh, how I see like, because a lot of people, a lot of my friends, they have they have their own business, but they don't open that an account. So you have a business, but how to expand without a proper accounting? We got, uh, so you cannot ask for financial if you don't have any proper accounting. So uh, this one is just add up only. The vision and mission, you need to have your own vision and mission. Uh, for your own company. Uh, as a contractor, we, we think that our vision is to build uh, a country. Our mission is to make sure that our vision is uh, achieved. Uh, so that is uh, the best vision for, uh, I think, for every company. And uh, the example of the good vision and mission is uh, IJM over here, one of the, of the contractor too. Uh, see, this is their vision, even though that they are multinational. Uh, the GLCs, they, they have their own mission. So if you start a business, so make, sure, make sure that you have your own vision and mission of the company. So what you want to become later on. So uh, it's a big no-no to put your vision to become rich. No, he said, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, don't do that. So make sure that your vision is related with uh, uh, development, related with uh, what you want to achieve in the future later on. So, in my opinion, uh, I want, me myself, I want to contrib contrib contribute to the society. Uh, I'm not looking for profit, but I'm looking forward for the state development and also how to I can contribute to the society. For example, hiring more people, at least uh, I can contribute to, uh, the, uh, to the economy. That is my main agenda right now. I, I'm not looking for any uh, monetary wise so uh, this is the strategy for a contractor uh, we have a proposed uh, short-term strategy uh, the mid-term strategy uh, that i propose to not only propose uh, to share with you guys later on uh, strategy number one two three until 12 we have 12 strategy this one is a strategy for the sme and this strategy is not being shared inside any strategic management books. The strategic management books only apply to the multinational company. 
but not for the small scale company. So, uh, for in my opinion, for the strengthen the short term strategy, always more than one or two years from now, one or two years, and that mid term strategy will go for two to five years from now. So you need to plan. Uh, you need to know what you you do, what you do in business. Uh, strategy number one always the same thing. You need to establish your own business. But if you have a business, you need to slice off the establish of the company. But if you have another crazy crazy idea, you acquire other people company. If you reach enough, and then after that, you need to establish your uh, the bank account. Hire the right auditor uh, and do a bit of capital injection. If you don't have any capital injection, never mind. We have another way for you. You can try to find another partner who is rich. Number one, Robert Kwok, siapa? Ataupun Sheikh Muta Al Buhari. You can find uh, other people, and then uh, you don't, if you don't have to, just establish a company first. Later, think about it. From time to time, you will you will find someone who finance your your uh, your company, and strategy number three always number one priority for me. Number one priority, you need to establish your own license, no matter what happen, including ISO, our company certified ISO right now. Do a proper licensing, license. If you don't have any license, you cannot do your business in. Uh, you cannot do business properly. Uh, other people will see you or oh, this guy is just doing the business only but not interested in uh, in the expansion of the company if you do your license properly you can expand significantly i can guarantee you i can guarantee you if you do your own license you do it properly do it properly uh, in my company right now within two years we change we we expand our license significantly so uh, that is our stronghold right now. That's our current strength right now. And as a strategy number four, always preparation of the good company profile because you need to pass to other people. Other people will see your profile. Who are you? Everything will be there. Who is your financial backup? It will be there too. And always prepare a good documentation method. For example, uh, you have your own running number for data, PV number, and then after that, everything has been documented. Your policy, and then your uh, meta statement, and everything related about the company documentation need to put in proper order. And I have that method too. Uh, in my company currently, we uh, we are more toward digital copy. We only kept a hard copy for letter of award only. Any legal matter. And accounting, we only kept that only. But for formal communication, we use soft copy. And everything will be uh, documented inside our server. Uh, that is our, our company policy. And that is the reason why we have no problem to do business with Strau Energy because we can we can comply with the digital uh, digital requirement in Strau Energy procurement system. Uh, we, we normally other people will do uh, do data uploading within one or two days. We can do a data uploading within two days, eh, two, two hours only. It's very fast because our mode was digital formats. And the strategy number five, always maintain a good cash flow. If you start, if you just start your business, uh, try to get a small project first. Even though that project is 10,000 wicket, 20,000 wicket, just get it first. What happens if you lose? Just get it first. Never mind. The most always remember the most important thing is cash flow. When the bank identify there is money coming inside the account, they know money out. They will know. At the end of the day, later on, when they see your account is active, for sure they will help you. They they will give you financing. So that is the most important thing. So try to maintain a good cash flow, even though the project is small. Try to get it, dapat ini, dapat ke saja. Uh, over here, uh, a remark over here. Always keep learning because uh, in this business, terlalu banyak suka dan duka. So you need to learn along the way. You need to learn along the way, uh, and then after that, if you have a capital, make 
sure that capital that capital is rolling compounded satu persatu and do profit retention for the first one or two years is very important to do profit retention don't spend lavishly do not spend lavishly not all people boleh tahan tengok duit tak, tak semua orang boleh tahan tengok duit so try to avoid uh, try to avoid buy expensive car buy only mm, people will see you as frugal but uh, it's good for your company remember you have you have your own company to take care of that is the most important thing uh, do your own uh, accounting to financially and strategy number six now we go to the midterm strategy the short terms has settled the short term strategy is more toward the strengthening of the company you establish your company you strengthen your company first and then after that the mid term strategy you started to expand satu persatu the mid term strategy strategy number six you try to collaborate with other contractor cartel <laughs> black alliance so this is this is the strategy that i always put into an account so i met with a lot of friends and we collaborate with other contractor we for sure will collaborate and if you have enemy in the market try to turn that enemy to become your friends so reduce your enemy in the market so for sure you will have an enemy an enemy so always do collaboration always do do diligence to check other people's company is either they have competency or not before you do collaborations uh, i do my own due diligence to check other people company if you want me to teach you after this i can teach you oh, almost one hour the prof Sorry, it's Bob. okay it's okay carry on carry on i think you have a lot of things to say to <laughs> i should prepare six slides on this uh okay strategy number seven is to if you need to surrender your, your license to big boys surrender your license for the reason behind it is uh you you give other people use your license you enjoy the cash flow first you use that cash flow to build other project then you can expand so that is the strategy it can be used to and the strategy number eight to negotiate with the uh, investor if you have uh, and then make sure that investor they earn based on project basis uh, try not to invite them to become part of your company it will become hostile takeover later on try to avoid that hostile takeover is very ugly very ugly and then strategy number nine negotiate with bankers because you have your good cash flow in in and out you can start negotiate with bankers so normally in this is what i do in my bank this online isn't it uh, this is what i do in my bank uh, i told my bank that if you support me i will put all my associate company including my company account and future project account inside my bank in one branch only so i deal with them like that so it's a yeah, important tool for me and then strategy number and strategy 10 is to leverage your cash flow inside the account the thing that i told you just now and strategy number 11 is to do multiple project it will strengthen your bank account remember though if you have one project start try to look for another one in the middle of the uh, project execution it's very important very important and then strategy number 12 is to attach your company with big firm if you are small you need to attach your company with big firm that is the reason why we attach our company with some of the company big firming company in Sarawak. for example uh, we purposely attach our company in Chofil. so we help them at the same time we enjoy the uh a good image so Saba, uh, we have another six slide coming in six so this is the strategy to handle competitions uh it's very dangerous strategy uh always bear in mind that this strategy is for you to know only not, not for you to implement if you know the strategy then you you know how to defend your company 
Okay, strategy number one is the business acquisition. If you have a company, you can buy other people's equity. But always bear in mind, you can buy the equity not more than 5%. You need to comply with the CIDB regulation. If more than 5%, your, your main license can be terminated. So 5% is official. You can do the back deal, back agreement later on. How many percent you want to hold? So the other method is to do proxy purchasing. For example, if you have your, um, if you have other people, your partners, you can use their, their names to, to do purchase for, for other people's company. It's called a proxy purchase. So uh, just for you to know only, not for implementation. Uh, number two, strategy number two is to do a secret alliance, collaboration secret alliance. This one is good too. It's a good too. It's a must. Uh, just now, other people. Uh, just now, my partners come to my office. This is the collaboration that we have between me and my company. It's actively being used in the market. A JV official joint venture is a common. It's a common practice. The collaboration, and then after that, your uh, try to focus on your strength, your competitive advantage. After your company has established for one or two years, you focus on your strength only. And then when other people started to know your strength, they will try to look for you. And then do related diversification plan because I actively uh, do this related diversification, establishment of new business. And then unrelated diversification plan is a good tool. It's a good tool. So recently I involved in the, uh, in the sand business. This one is considered as unrelated diversification, diversification plan. And okay, this uh, the red color. The red color is for you to know only. Just in case anything happened to you later on, you know what to do. Strategy number eight is host project hostile takeover. If other people try to hijack your project, this, this scenario will take uh, taking in effect, taking in effect. And then proxy damaging the company image and reputation. It can be done too. Seriously, it can be done too. And you can knock out your competitors by blocking the uh, suppliers, resources, clients. You can do that too. But uh, always bear in mind what goes around comes around. Don't do other bad things to other people because of this is only for you to, to know that there is a strategy to, to, to do bad things to other people. But uh, I urge you guys not to do, to do, to do this. But good for you to know only in case anything happened later on, because outside world is very ugly. They will do anything to, to harm you, to harm you. And this is that is the reason why I lost almost six hundred hundred thousand ringgit last last year. But luckily can survive. Because of luckily. And okay, this is the strategy that never been told by other people. Okay, I can guarantee you. Uh, this strategy normally being used by the big firm, the public listed company, big firms. Uh, for example, if you have your, you establish multiple company to control, to control other company. So this is the best part. So this strategy is for the expansion through subsidies and profit sharing. So you form your own teams. You cannot do business as one person only, one man show only. You need to have your own teams. So the main company over here, the main company will control the subsidiary company. And that subsidiary company is 100% owned corporate share without any individual share inside, controlled by the main company. If you see over here, kenapa nak buat macam tu? It's a risk management. It's as considered a risk management. After this, I'll tell you the reason why everything to be put inside the subsidiary company. And the investor and the financial support will go to subsidiary A, all the asset to be placed by inside the uh, subsidiary A. And what happened to the main company? The main company will become the investing holding company. They will earn through dividend only. So what is the best part about investment holding company? They can use the profit to leverage to buy a bigger asset in the future. So this is the part of the uh, strategic plan of the company, normally being used by the public listed company. And for the subsidiary, 
this subsidiary to be used to navigate around in the market. Why we need to have a subsidiary company controlled by the main company to navigate around in the market. So they will control a lot of company. They will control the joint venture. They will control the sub, another sub, sub, subsidiary company. Uh, they will do that. They will do that. The reason why they do that is to make sure that this subsidiary company can expand significantly in the market. So any profit that they earn, they will pay dividend to the main company. And this subsidiary company will pay any earn and joint venture, they will pay to the subsidiary company A. Why we need to do that? Kenapa business is straightforward. One company is enough. Always remember that uh, in this world, there's no straight line. There will be a, a lot of hitam and putih. In case anything happen later on, the saman menyaman later on. So we try to mitigate the risk. So the company A will handle the, the this type of uh, issues later on, and the main company will not get affected. So the main company is held by a single person only, or can be held by the offshore company. Okay, this is the, the format that, that I found in the market, in the market, and uh, I think that is the best way to, to expand your business uh, uh, significantly. So you can tell me that uh, it is a not good strategy, but it is normally being uh, applied in the market, normally being applied in the market. And uh, the reason why we have an asset over here, all asset to be put under subsidiary A to make sure the subsidiary A have a very big asset. If you see inside the balance sheet later on, non-current asset, for sure they will akan tinggi. The non-current asset, kita akan cuba request for the banking facility and that this subsidiary company is designed for to go far. So any loan we will take through the subsidiary A. The subsidiary A will take the risk of uh, loan dengan besar lah, to, to manage your big project. We are talking about the planning for future planning, for example, 10 million, 20 million, 30 million. This structure is the most, uh, the most, uh, the best way lah, and normally being applied. And all the financial support investor will put that inside the subsidiary A. Any joint venture, for example, the sand business to be put as a joint venture and the other subsidiary. And the other, the other sub subsidiary to be put under subsidiary A. So that's it. The, uh, the offshore company is very important too. You can open an offshore company and normally company, inside the company, we have two types of share, the individual share and corporate share. In this case, we try to use the corporate share as a main share. The individual share, we try to reduce it. We try not to use the corporate share because anything happen later on, the individual share will get affected, which means that uh, the main person who involved in that, that business get affected. Uh, in other words, we form a shield for, for the company to move forward at the same time to mitigate the risk. So this strategy is applied. Memang dah di apply. Memang dah di apply in the market. And me myself have applied this strategy and it works. This is the strategy that I put inside my company. This is the strategy inside my company that I uh, form a new company. It's called Eureka. And then Black Dot Management Strambahat is a company for me to navigate around to do joint venture and also to put another subsidiary in. So uh, I will not hold any share inside the inside the subsidiary company. But the main company will hold a share inside the inside the company as a corporate share, share corporate, share business. So this is to reduce uh, my my risk later on. So if other people try to to investigate to check what is my background, the company background, they need to go for second layer to reach me. So this is a good strategy. And then for the for this strategy, the the subsidiary company that I put, they will do a lot of joint venture. This is the joint venture that, that I embark currently. Uh, I think that you know the EV charging in Sarawak is 
is a huge business coming soon and uh, a smart meter and then uh, artificial artificial intelligence call call center and then our, my new business is uh, the sand business currently this is the the current joint venture that i involve currently uh, so with this magnitude of business so i need to mitigate the risk that's why we we convert everything to corporate share and i control the 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 company using other company to to reduce the risk so this is the case study story prof nah lebih prof another 10 minutes i think okay this is the case study that uh uh we do a bit of case study okay as you know i think you guys know about zikon zikon berhad zikon engineering a public listed company in sarawak one of the class a and g7 company and we known them as a good company and also a bad company a good company a good company and this is part of their subsidiary company we try to look one by one what happened in this company this company they have three directors they have a paid up capital 150000 ringgit 150000 ringgit their main business is geotechnical and piling works geotechnical means that they on do bohol soil testing and do piling and their license is cidb grade 4 i purposely choose cidb grade 4 and they don't have any sarawak license they have cidb only their revenue in 2020 during mco is zero the expenses is 400000 ringgit and net profit is negative earning 400000 ringgit so they have no other business this company is dormant they have no asset but when we run a breakdown check on this company they have a liability 300 million 3100 million uh, liability hutang and this company dah keluarkan duit 31 million too inside the company in other word company dia berhutang 131 million berhutang what can we do to help this company can we turn around this company uh it's very damn it's very difficult very difficult but it's a good case study it's a good test study so this is a strategy strategy that i propose for us to study only uh, you don't need to worry almost at the end of the discussion at the end of the presentation so this is the the proposed change management that i put to how to recover the company uh, you need to formulate a plan for the company yes of course you need to formulate a plan and then after that inside the plan you, you need to get more foundation business and also subcontractor from the zikon remember this company have 31 million in in debt and they are one of the subsidiary of zikon i hope that zikon see this they see my potential yeah <laughs> and then uh the try to get some foundation business zikon of course they are one of the contractor you need to give your business to your subsidiaries and try to get foundation business from the from other company or the piling work from other company that's it it's enough more than enough the company who have a very strong background in piling works is thin lily i think you guys heard is a is a uh, is a piling works contractor they can a lot earn a lot over here so the ideas behind this is to change this company to become a piling contractor and then after that use after you so you settle all the debts not to settle all your debts try to form a a, a factory a precast factory a piling factory at the same time you do you do a piling works and then you do precast piling so you have two business revenue generation over, here, over there so this is the purpose and then after that the debt restructuring okay as far as you know the debt if you see if you see over here can you see the the prof, the balance sheet over here okay if you see non uh, okay non current asset is zero okay non current asset is zero means that they don't have any asset the current asset is 7000 ringgit they have cash money 7000 ringgit only maybe uh, for the non current liabilities they have a long term liabilities uh, they have uh, no long term liabilities the the current liabilities they have 31 million 
and then the earnings is less than 3100 million 31 million means that they purposely cash out 31 million i don't know why but it's a big question mark but never mind we put aside first there are two possibility possibility number one situation number one is the loan given by the bank if the loan given by the bank you need to do debt restructuring with the bank to do uh, to do the repayment and then after that you need to may go with the main company to do the repayment on behalf of the uh, subsidiaries. Situation number two. Okay, a lot of things happen in that balance sheet. What happened if the loan is given by the company, not by the bank? It, it can be happen too. So you need to request for strike off or to request for debt restructuring internally within Zikon. So there are two situations: money supplied by the bank or money supplied by the by the uh, by the main company. So that's, that's why they have debt, that one million debt. And the business that they are involved in that need to be focusing is piling works. That's it. It's not more than that. Piling works. You need to do strategy number four is to form collaboration with CIB, CMS, Sinili, and other piling contractor works to supply all the piling material. Just do the works only. In Sarawak, to do the piling works, memang is a hot business. It's a hot business. Uh, it's a hot business. And a lot of people require this uh, type of service. Okay, financial. Okay. Strategy number five is to maintain a good positive cash flow if you if you if you still remember i always talk about the cash flow i always talk about to, to maintain a good cash flow so it's very important and it is uh, you need to increase your equity value at the same time to do true profit retention and then after that you need to propose transfer all the machinery because they have a lot of machinery uh, Sadai, it can be transferred in these uh, subsidiaries and to be used. And then the strategy number six is to 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 expand uh, to do to, to maintain a current business. Means that uh, you need to focus on the piling uh, business. And then strategy number number seven, when you have stable income, stable business, then you started to venture into the precast piling piling works. It's mean that you become one of the SCIB competitors and CMS competitors. Piling preparation of piling six meter one hundred fifty mm. Uh, that's it. It's more than enough. You supply that, then the company will start to generate revenue slowly. They will not. They will not able to pay that. Uh, Thirty one million instantly, but at least they can survive in from time to time so we almost came into a conclusion or oh, this one they have kind of them uh zikon berhad they are out we have uh, i know this have i know what happened to kim lun and zikon kim lun after this after this it's a good question. It's a good question. Uh, okay, let me finish this first, and then after that, answer the, the questions. So, in conclusion, let's finish this. Uh, in conclusion, the number one license is important. Number two, you need to have a business. Number three, you need to have a stable cash flow, and then after that, then you can expand. Do not skip this step. If you don't have any stable cash flow, you cannot expand. So this is the tips uh, that I going to I'm going to give you. And then in business, we need to work hard. We need to focus on the result, and then you need to work closely with someone you trust. Someone you trust, and then uh, expand your business uh, network in community within a circle. You met other contractor, you make friend with them. Who knows that? Uh, bila dah sampai masa, you will use their license, pinjam, sekejap. Uh, the that is the most important thing. 
And then for the cash flow, always remember to maintain a good cash flow. Do not spend secara rancak, rancak dosa. Jangan terlalu banyak sangat spend. And then don't buy unnecessary things when you start up a business. But it is a different game after you establish your business. It is a different game. But when you start your business, you need to maintain your cash flow first. And do not spend lavishly. Uh, and then do not transfer all your spending to the company and just purposely to reduce the, the net profit and reduce the taxation, payment of taxation. Always remember if you if you perform, if your net profit is high, you need to pay tax high. And the bank will see that how much you pay tax taxation in order they in order for them to provide you uh, financial support. So the higher you pay tax, the the value of valuable company, you will become more valuable at all, uh, in the eyes of banks. So pay tax. Try not to avoid if you, at least a little. In my opinion, just a little prof, just a little. So I think that is my presentation today. I hope that uh, you enjoyed listening to this uh, small talk. A small talk. Thank you again. Do you have any questions? Just now I heard Kim Loon something. Uh, the WPC 06, 03, I handled 06. I handled 06. Water pipe 06. Okay, All right. questions. I think I think there are few there are few questions. Uh, I'm not sure the uh, maybe they sent to you also directly. Uh, oh. but we have we have also question in the chat uh, for everyone. I think that's two questions that side. If you want, you can see the chat box. They have a uh, Two question. One one question is about uh why in what kind of situation that the company needs to do secret alliance. <laughs> I think you can answer that first. And the second question, second question is about to know uh, uh from Shirla about to know. Uh, I would like to know how do you remain competitive in the challenging market, especially now with rising price of materials. I think it's very related in your in your industry, and I think the question that you get also so. You can answer that. You can respond. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, question number one. Uh, secret alliance. Huh? Uh, Bila boleh apply? Where can, where can we apply the secret alliance? The secret alliance can be applied when you started to bid for, for one project. For example, you put two, three companies inside. All two, three companies are your friends. Okay, you put 10 million, I put 10 million, another one 10 million, it will become average. So the, the client will choose which fund is the best, based on the technical. That is the second alliance. That is the application coming in. And sometimes this second alliance can harm other people too. It can harm other people too. It can exploit other people. For example, if you control the market, control the market, if the price is 10 ringgit, you can put 12 ringgit and other people, your alliance can put 12 ringgit to other people can do anything. They suffered loss for two ringgit. So it is a very bad way to do things, but uh, you need to play things smart. Uh, this is where the application of the second alliance coming in. Uh, normally not, not actively being used, not actively because we are not cartel, but sometimes uh, it happened in our, in our teams, it happened. In our, and I hope that answered your questions. And number two, uh, the rising cost, the competitive challenge in uh, rising of material price. I think that you know that uh, SOR has, uh, in 2014, JKR has issued a perkeliling, a circular, whereby the variation of price need to be removed from the contract. PWD 2009 need to be removed. The variation of price. The, the meaning of it is any changes in price will not be covered inside the contract. In 2021, our government started to, uh, to the implement back the version of price, but only for metal, sand, gravel, if I'm not mistaken. Metal, sand, gravel. Metal means that mm, rebar, aluminum is applied to. Is applied to, but for 
in this challenge in this uh, challenging uh, market we we need to see our contract first number one number two if the contract entitled for variation of price then we request for variation of price so if, can you imagine in sor jkr schedule of wet schedule of wet jkr uh, inside the schedule of wet jkr one ton a uh, one kg of steel equals to four ringgit but at that time one kg market price is only two ringgit we have two ringgit floating for you to to do profit and also to do labor works so current situation what happened in current situation so ajkr four ringgit but for market price is one kg equals to three ringgit 60 cent only 40 cent profit so it uh it uh, or the contractor suffered a lot over there they suffered a lot and uh this is what happened you need to request for variation of price to the uh to the to the project owner and i think you guys know about the coastal road what happened in the coastal road a lot of project right now become sick project is a good because of rising of material price and i heard that some of the company will be terminated by the government at all due to this they need to surrender the project because of the price too low and the contract too low and the price too high they suffered a loss so they need to surrender the project a lot you will hurt you will hurt a lot of project termination in the market within these three months i can guarantee you this is all across the world uh Everyone has furious, including the thing, including the ministers. I think furious about this, and about the about the, the Zikon things. Uh. Zikon JV with Kim Lun. Uh, to make things simple, uh, they are not performing, so Kim Lun take over. So Zikon only licensee only. That's the story that I know. Luckily, Kim Lun, uh, they they performing, so it's a good company. They took over, and then after they perform, it's a good company. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Any more? Uh, any more other question? I think this is a this has been a very good session. I'm not sure about uh, the one. I mean, the rest that listening. I think for me, it's a it's a very good. Uh, I mean. Uh, experience and lesson that you can get from from himself from because yeah he knows a lot of things that means that uh, it's not just about the secret it's not just about what you need to do it's about it's about how we can expand a proper business and what what sort of things uh, uh, to be done if anyone here would involve directly or indirectly in the business decision those who make the decision it's very important to know what sort of uh, appropriate decision need to be made. Like uh, I think uh, some of the example that he was giving, especially the example of uh, Zikon there, um, and then the example that given by uh, from Promise on, uh, I mean company itself is is very valuable in that sense to know how big is actually the market here in Sarawak. I mean, uh, it's just focus on Sarawak. But certainly, I think I'm sure in his. In their expansion plan, in his expansion plan, I'm sure you want to expand beyond Sarawak. Uh, but for now, certainly the focus is here first to build up, and uh, it's good to uh, have this kind of uh, scenario, right? Um, any last question for him? You can unmute yourself if you want, or you can put it in the chat box if uh, if that is possible. So any last question for? For Nick, uh, for Nor Nickman, I, I, I often call him Nick only, so that's why I get used to that. <laughs> right, he was, uh, he was, he was in the class some some years ago. Uh, but that that time we still have face to face class. But right now, uh, the class here actually uh, still on online. I think I think some of the background, some some in this room today, uh, Nick, uh, they are also engineering background. Uh, so maybe. Uh, in the future, some of you can have some collaboration or some related business collaboration. That will be good, right? So it's good actually to market, uh, uh, to market uh, your the company itself and to know that you are one of the 
uh, related company who have the license, have the proper license and doing the kind of uh, proper business. And now you're venturing into the model that uh, to expand to expand your company, you have your investment company. Well, that is great, right? Uh, I yeah. think uh, and and to to go into your mid uh, planning and for the long term planning and so on. So that 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 for me is good. Uh, at least uh, we you I mean to I'm pretty sure that when you when you uh, apply or you when you get your CMBA from Unimas, uh, certain parts that you learn in the class theoretically, you apply into the real scenario into your company, right? Uh, with your engineering background from UTM, and then you have your uh, master's in business administration. Yeah, you can have what, uh, I mean, uh, to venture into what you're doing, uh, passionate to do what you're doing, right? So any more last question before we go off for today? Before I let him go, before you let him go. <laughs> it's about... Oh, oh, sorry to take your time. Huh? So it's about uh, like nearly 4.30 right now, 4.24. I think it's a very good talk. I'm not sure about the rest. Okay. Any last question? No? Okay. Um, if there is no last question, I think uh, if everyone, you know, uh, if you can, uh, if appropriate for everyone to on your camera, we take a nice picture, a nice photo with... With these uh, uh, technologies, uh, no Nikman Saleh. Eh? <laughs> he have his officially he have his badge here. That's the badge that he wear. <laughs> Official badge of, of TS. Eh? TS not Tansri. Eh? It's not Tansri. <laughs> but soon maybe Tansri. He'll get his Tansri. Uh, so can everyone on their camera? We, we take a nice, nice, nice photo with our uh, uh, industrial uh, lecture here. And then we can, uh, yeah, can let him go. Thank you for uh, on your camera. Oh, good. It's no problem. Those of you who have an issue with the camera, it's not an issue. It's not a problem, right? Any more? Any more else? So all of you also can take the picture, not just me, but I'll take the official one. You can take your own, and then uh, I'll send. I'll send to him certainly. And this session is recorded, and I I ask him permission that I will put in my. I'll put it in my YouTube channel actually. <laughs> so I think all the information that he shared is good, not just not the secret, you know, uh, it's an open secret. <laughs> so, right, so uh, one, two, three. Okay, you can take for your own if you want. I, I, I've taken mine, this one nice picture here. Right, um, thank you very much, uh, technologist, no, Nikman Saleh. Um, I, as I, always tell him I need to, I have not yet visit his, his company uh, officially, uh, go to his company. I have to pay a visit to his company. And okay. <laughs> yes, I also right now in my room, I didn't, I didn't on my, I didn't on my uh, lights. Uh, it's only the light from the, uh, this is the light from the, <laughs> uh, this is from the sun, uh, although it's a bit cloudy out there. Right? So, <laughs> right. So thank you very much. I hope, uh, I wish, uh, the best in your company. I wish your company can expand more and becoming one of the uh, respectful company in this uh, in this Rawat here in the region and and the country certainly. And thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. For See the you opinion. again. No thank problem. you. Thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Have fun. Uh, have fun. <laughs>